So let's take a look at our big, new and exceptionally angry, possessed world eaters. Eight bound are looking rather brutal, so let's talk about the regular data sheet and the exalted eight bound in games of 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking world eaters once more, and today I thought we'd take a focused look at the 8-bound and exalted 8-bound data sheets. Now we have the four rules for the units, and it's becoming a bit more apparent how good these guys are going to be compared with the rest of the army. In this video, let's do a focus unit review. We'll talk over their models briefly and their data sheets, talk about war gear and the comparison between 8-bound and exalted 8-bound on the tabletop, a few obvious buffs and synergies, and how I'd think about using them in-game. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. First up, the 8-bound are a fairly recent creation for the World Eaters from Games Workshop. It basically sounds like they wanted to make World Eaters' own version of Possessed, so they devised up some new lore for them, where they lock a Bannock World Eater in an 8 cage with a bunch of 8 blood letters. They all fuse them into one unholy abomination with too many souls in it, and the horrendous fusion of man and 8 demons gives them some unholy strength, and probably rage over and above standard World Eaters, which is saying something. From Games Workshop, the models are £35, €45 Euros or $60 for the three of them. I feel like the miniatures are fairly cool, nice and demonic looking, though maybe a few of them go a little bit too far perhaps. It's not the most awesome in terms of plastic for the money in my opinion, and you only get two points per dollar, which is on the lower side for Games Workshop. I suppose if you wanted to save a bit of money, you could think about using the standard Possessed from Games Workshop and add some corn parts and bits to represent their eviscerators and things. You get five of those per box rather than three, so it might be a viable alternative. In any case though, the models are kind of fun and very dangerous looking. Great big mutated cornate abominations with mutated backpacks and weapons fused with their limbs. The main options in the kit are to build a standard 8-bound squad or the exalted squad. The exalted come with the chain fists and the eviscerators. Plus there's a couple of sergeant option weapons for each of the units. The champion can either take some paired weapons or the great big heavy eviscerator that you can see on the top left here. If you're looking to pick them up in the UK, Element Games does have them at the usual discount, £30 at the moment, so £5 off or a 15% discount. I'll leave a link to them down in the video description, and the link does help support the channel at no extra cost to yourself. Let's talk rules though, and let's look at the standard 8-bound and the exalted 8-bound data sheets. They're both elite choices, the standard 8-bound you get between 3 or 6 models in the squad, each for 40 points. And as well as the standard World Eaters keywords, they do get the core keyword, plus Demon. Their stat line is kind of similar to a Chaos Space Marine Possessed, an 9 inch move hitting on 3s, Toughness 5 with 3 wounds and a 5 plus invul save in defence, and when they attack, their Strength 6 and 4 attacks with those 8 band eviscerators, but in reality it's going to be more. The reason being is that they get Relentless Rage, so basically an extra strength and attack on the charge or in the first round of combat, so they'll usually be picking up that. But then on top of that, each regular one gets two 8-band eviscerators, both strike it as Strength User, so Strength 7 with Relentless Rage, AP-3 and Damage 2, and each one of those also gives you an additional attack as well, meaning that even completely at base, your standard 8-band are going to be hitting with a big 7 attacks at Strength 7, AP-3 and Damage 2. Frankly, enormous damage output out of a 40 point model. Then on the champion, you can either choose a pair of lacerators, they don't get the extra attacks, but they do hit at damage 3 and strength plus 1, and that's usually going to mean 6 attacks on the champion at strength 8, damage 3, which is pretty huge. Or you can take the heavy chain glaive, strength 8, AP minus 3, and damage 1 when you're on the charge and doubling the attacks, so you're usually going to be hitting a crazy 12 times with that. We'll compare the damage output in just a second. Otherwise, finally for their datasheet, they get a rule called Blood Send. This allows them to arrive from Strategic Reserve in round 1 if you want to, but to be honest, I think it's probably a bit of a trap. If you put your fairly expensive squad in reserve, then it means they're just going to turn up 9 inches away from the enemy, fail their charge more often than not, even with a command point reroll, and then probably just going to get gunned down by the opponent next turn, as they're not really all that tough for the cost. Overall, I think I generally just want to start them on the board. In any case, in terms of general strengths and weaknesses, the 8-bound are fast and very, very dangerous in combat, though in terms of toughness, they're kind of mediocre, I'd say. Anything with damage 2 or 3 and at least a bit of AP is going to wreck them quite quickly for the amount of points that they cost. Just to compare war gear for the standard 8-bound, here's a comparison of the champion weapons of lacerators versus the heavy chain glaive against a few likely targets. These ones really aren't too badly balanced, to be honest. They actually have around about the same damage output against Space Marines or a Toughness 8 vehicle with minus 1 damage. But otherwise, as you'd expect, the Heavy Chain Glaive with the double attacks leads to around about twice the amount of dead guardsmen. 
and the Lacerators with their flat 3 damage do a fair bit better against the Terminators or Toughness 7 vehicle without the minus 1 damage. Overall, out of the two, I'd probably go for the Lacerators. I feel like it's probably more important to be better against those middle damage targets as opposed to be extra good at blending hordes. They are both pretty awesome profiles though, and I guess the Heavy Chain Glaive does have the advantage that if you use Red Butchers, it goes up to damage 2, and that'll generally mean that you catch up in all categories if you happen to use that stratagem. Overall though, I think you could make arguments for using either, I would go with the Lacerators myself. As mentioned though, that isn't the only way that you can field them. The other build for the unit is the Exalted 8 Bound, which I feel like Games Workshop have actually done quite a good job of making an incredible alternative for the regular ones. Generally the trade-offs are a little bit better damage and defence for the points, but losing the core keyword for some other special rules. The Exalted 8 Bound can only ever be taken in units of 3s, so it's 135 points for the full unit regardless, basically means that they're 45 points per model. Their stat line is very similar indeed, the only big difference is that they get a 4 plus invul rather than a 5 plus, and they hit on 2s in combat rather than 3s, so they're a bit better in weapon skill. Their melee weapons also see a very decent tune up as well, and will be a lot better against wrecking the heaviest targets around. Each regular Exalted 8 bound gets an 8 bound chain fist plus a single 8 bound eviscerator. It means that you make the majority of the attacks with the chain fist, usually at strength 10, AP 4, and damage 2, and then a single attack with the eviscerator as a bonus. Then the champion gets a slightly different option. They either get the choice of the heavy chain glaive again, or they can take dual chain fists just for the six attacks, and they'll be striking at strength 10, AP minus 4, and a big damage 3. Pretty massive against chewing through very heavy armor there. Otherwise, like the regular 8 bounds, they get their relentless rage and that fearsome aura to debuff enemy leadership nearby. But instead of that altered reserve rule, they instead can get warp strike, so you could just disruptively deep strike them later in the game maybe when you've had the chance to get that plus one to charge bonus up, and then you get the chance to prevent enemy fall back with their Blood Fury special rule. This is a six inch aura of preventing the enemy falling back on a four plus, excluding vehicle units. I'd say this one is potentially a really, really nice advantage. You could do a similar sort of shenanigans to Angron, charge something and kill it with their massive melee, and then consolidate into something else that really doesn't want to be in combat with these guys, and then have a pretty reasonable chance of keeping them in combat in the enemy turn. It's nowhere near as guaranteed as Angron, but it's still a really big deal if this ever triggers and forces the opponent to try and kill them in combat. We'll compare the numbers on the two units in just a second, but generally these guys cost a bit more, though they get more damage and defence for the points, are particularly good against heavy vehicles and have stronger special rules, but all that for the loss of core, which is quite a big deal for the special rules it prevents you having. Just for the Exalted 8 bound war gear choices, you can weigh up the dual chain fist versus the heavy chain glaive on the champion. I feel like unlike the regular 8 bound, this one's a little bit more skewed. The dual chain fists really do win out on anything that's better than light infantry. The extra strength and AP over the lacerators mean that they're just solidly better against most targets. I'd almost certainly take the chain fist on these ones. They're just overall better by really quite a lot against anything with 3 wounds or more. Some of the most important targets to be good against in 40k. While we are on the subject of comparing the two units, we can do 8 bound versus exalted 8 bound. Here's just a rough table of their damage output against a few likely targets. Here we've got 3 8 bound for 120 points with the champion with the lacerators, and they're squaring off against a unit of 3 exalted 8 bound, though I have weighted the points down for the exalted 8 bound. Their actual numbers will be a bit higher than this, I've just adjusted to be the equivalent of 120 points for direct comparison of the units. In any case though, in terms of damage per points, it pretty much is a flat win for the Exalted 8 bound. They're around about equally good at killing Guardsmen, the regular 8 bound get a few more attacks, but this is balanced by the hitting on 2 plus of the Exalted version. They're kind of not too different against Terminators, given that the Lacerators are quite good against them, but certainly against heavier things like vehicles, the Exalted 8 bound come out really quite a long way ahead. Doing over 20 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle, or 8 wounds to a hard target with a 5 plus invul and minus 1 damage, versus some less respectable numbers on the regular 8 bound side. Don't get me wrong, the numbers are very very good for both units, they're both brutal, and particularly so against things like standard space marines, but in terms of just pure destructiveness, the exalted 8 bound do seem to win out. Overall, they get somewhere between around a 20 to 60% damage increase on average against these variety of different targets. It's not all just about damage though. Defence-wise, it's maybe a little bit more of a mixed bag. 
Basically, the Exalted 8 band cost a bit more for the wounds that they bring to the table, but they do have the better inball save, and that more than outweighs that against anything with AP that matters. Again, weighting the units down to 120 points each, it means that the standard 8 band have a bit more efficient durability against mortal wounds, AP 0 or AP minus 1 attacks, but anything with AP minus 2 or better, it'll take more hits to bring down the same squad of Exalted 8 band for the cost. Overall, it's at least fairly even, a 12% win against the low AP for the regular 8 bound, or a 14% win against the high AP for the Exalted. I'd maybe give a slight win to the Exalted 8 bound out of these though. The thing that they fear the most is big high strength and damage 3 attacks. Typically, I'd say they're generally going to have an AP of 2 or better, so I'd probably give the Exalted 8 bound a small win there. In general, for that reason, I'd say that the Exalted 8 Bound have really quite vastly better damage and perhaps a little bit better defence overall. But in reality, the regular 8 Bound getting core does mean that they catch up really quite a lot. It means that if they can scout move with Lord Invocatus, they get access to the stratagems like the Fight and Death and Heroic Intervention one. And beyond that, they generally make some better use of the Blood Tithe boosts. The Exalted 8 Bound don't really do very much with the plus 1 to hit, for example and the regular 8 band will get a bit more out of auto wounding on 6s and better AP. On the other hand though, the Exalted do get their warp strike, the ability to lock enemies in combat, and not needing any extra support is actually kind of nice, it means you can just invest in them and then save your buffs for other units, and I feel that that in combination with just generally strong damage and defence stats is usually quite a good thing. All things considered, I feel like they're at least fairly balanced, and in a lot of top world eaters lists at the moment, I'd kind of expect people to run some of both varieties. Talking of getting more out of them though, here's just a few other buffs and synergies that you can get for the units within Codex World Eaters. As big scary melee units, they basically make use of the entire blood tithe table pretty much. The feel no pain type defence could be particularly useful if the enemy's got a bunch of damage 3 weapons, things where just making one save could really ruin the efficiency of them. Mortal wound protection and a plus 1 to the charges is quite nice, plus 1 to charge could be quite handy for the exalted ones coming out of deep strike if you can get it off before that. Otherwise for the melee buffs, as with quite a lot of the rest of the army, I think that the exploding 6s to hit is perhaps the best one that you could go for. Otherwise, as mentioned, at least the exalted unit gets kind of limited value out of the rest of them. The plus 1 to hit is really quite nice for the regular one. AP is a bit underwhelming when you've already got at least AP 3, if not better, and the 6s to hit auto wound is kind of only really good against tough stuff if you know that you're fighting knights, for example. In general, I think that Exploding 6s hit will be my first priority for the damage output one. Otherwise, Exalted 8 Bound are generally going to want to do their own thing, but you can certainly support the core unit with characters. As mentioned, Lord Invocator seems like an excellent fit with a couple of big units of 8 Bound. You get them to scout move across the board, and because of the plus 2 inch movement boost that he gives, you'd be moving 11 inches with that, then do the same turn 1, so you can basically have two big blocks of 8 Bound, basically moving 22 inches up the board, right up to the enemy deployment zone edge, and then make a first turn charge ideally. It's kind of hilariously scary stuff, and I'd expect that to be a very common include in World Eaters lists. Otherwise, if you could coordinate rerolls from a Demon Prince, or even Khan or Angron potentially, then all well and good. I guess if you do have a big block of 8 bound just about to make a charge, then throwing Angron's full rerolls on them could be kind of powerful. You would have to weigh that up against having him buff himself though. Theoretically, you also have that relic for 6s to hit auto wound the enemy, I feel like it's maybe not so exciting on a unit that's got strength 7 already at least, if not more, but still that could be a big potent damage buff on regular 8 bound if they are fighting something like knights. For delivery to melee, you could think about a land raider, but I think that they're just a bit expensive for what they do really. You could get a lot more fighty corn guys for the same cost as that. With their good movement, you don't really need the extra movement boost either, so I'd probably just foot slog them and try and hide them behind terrain. Not unusable though for a bit of a luxury option, have a big battlefield bunker in the middle of the board for them to assault out of. As mentioned previously, you could think about strategic reserve, I think it's a bit unreliable for charges though. You just really don't want such an expensive unit just sitting out in the middle of the open, just ready for the enemy to shoot them down because they failed their charge. Finally, if you're running these guys outside of regular world eaters, and you get the Disciples of the Red Angel detachment, this would give all the 8 bound objectives secured, which is pretty nice. Handy to have on an aggressive unit that's going to be throwing themselves at the enemy. I feel like if you are running that formation, it's going to be very, very 8 pound heavy. And you do get the option to upgrade one unit with either two models for objectives, mortal wounds in melee, or a save against mortal wounds. I feel like my go-to would probably be the extra damage one on a regular unit of 8 bound. 
I suppose if you knew you were facing a big mortal wound heavy army ahead of time though, then the mortal wound protection one wouldn't be bad. To be honest, I feel like that demonic infusion thing is perhaps a bit of a distraction, it's not exactly the most powerful rule. Finally, for synergies and things, as big, scary and dangerous units, they are pretty much ideal for stratagems. There's two really good ones that are going to be locked just to the regular core 8 bound out of the World Eaters one. Gory Dismemberment, for the 6 to wound, dealing a mortal wound to a maximum of 6, easily done if you've got a whole bunch of attacks I guess, and 1 or 2 CP for Blood Frenzy, this one's where a core unit fights on death this phase. It'd be 2 CP for the 8 bound, as they're not troops, but it does mean that if your opponent tries to clear them in combat, then you're probably going to drag down a whole bunch of enemy with them. Could be pretty handy to react to the enemy interrupting in combat as well, at least it means that anything that they kill will still get to strike. Otherwise, out of the core World Eaters ones, there's two command points for Red Butchers, plus one damage in combat. That's one to seriously think about if you're fighting with three wound infantry, like enemy Terminators, or other heavies like that. Seems particularly nice if you have the great big heavy chain glaive as well, as opposed to the Lacerators or Chain Fists. Finally, there's another core one for aggressive intervention. This one allows a unit to heroically intervene 6 inches, always handy to have around and means that your opponent really has to keep arm's length away from the 8 bound even when they're counter attacking them, just in case they don't manage to kill them and then they jump into combat with you. Almost always going to be a command point very well spent if it allows you to do another turn worth of damage dealing, when otherwise you wouldn't have got any. Overall I feel that the fight and death is particularly nice seeing as it basically guarantees their enormous damage output and a bunch of the rest seem usable but kind of situational. I feel like the damage dealer one might just be slightly overkill against some things that you charge. Otherwise, if you are taking Disciples to the Red Angel, there's a fair few more options for them as they're not core locked. Eight bound really are the centre of the army. There's a bunch of reasonable enough options here. Cancelling Overwatch, plus one to wound in melee against depleted enemy units, and then a few maybe even more interesting ones. The auto advance 6 inches means that you can guarantee that a unit's going to move 15 inches, could be great to just get them to an objective or just nose them into behind cover so the enemy can't shoot them dead. A really big deal where you need it, that one. There's a one command point to move the units when they lose a casualty to shooting. That one could be massively disruptive. The opponent just sets them up to gun them down and then they just jump back into cover somewhere so they can't shoot them dead. That one could be kind of horrible if it saves the unit for a big charge in your next turn. Finally, there's that fairly brutal blood scent one, where if the enemy falls back, then you can just jump straight back into combat with them sometimes. Six inch consolidation when the enemy falls back could be enough to re-engage them or even engage something else. A bit of a gotcha one, that one. If you are playing Disciples, that's probably worth mentioning those weird movement ones at the start of the game. They do have the potential to surprise quite a bit. Overall, I would say that the Disciples have some really, really good options for supporting the 8-bound units. They are pretty much the focus of the army there. I'd say 8 bound and Exalted 8 bound are probably stronger in that formation, but overall the World Eaters army is probably weaker due to the other options that you pass up. So putting things together then, how would I think about fielding the 8 bound units in game? First up, at the moment I would say that they are a unit that you can run in multiples in competitive World Eaters lists. I have a bit of a suspicion that Games Workshop probably wanted to sell these guys. In terms of battle land damage dealers in the codex, they are pretty much the best option, very fast, Fairly ridiculous amounts of quality melee attacks available, and though their toughness is a bit on the weak side for the points, it's not downright awful. In terms of units and how I'd field them, I'd be a bit more tempted by a couple of big units of 5 regular 8 bound maybe, as a focal point for buffs, stratagems and pre-game moves. You could build them out to 6 of them for absolute maximal investment, I do feel though that that does have some disadvantages, you make yourself a bit easier to kill with blast weapons and give the unit coherency issues. I wouldn't take advantage of blood sense and use that strategic reserve thing, I'd probably start them on the board, ideally alongside Lord Invocatus and his Warlord trait if you're using him rather than Angron, and pre-game move them towards the enemy. Then I'd likely have a couple of other units of Exalted 8 bound, either start them on the board and jump them from terrain to terrain with their decent enough movement. Against the right foe you could think about using their warp strike though, jumping down and hopefully having that plus one to charge ability off to actually give them a reasonable chance of succeeding their charge. In terms of support, I'd generally say that they're solid enough to be quite independent if they need to be. They do seem to be a good unit to spend a bit of CP on though if you get the chance. Red Butchers, Fight on Death or Heroic Intervention all seem like they've got great value in the right situation. For the Disciples, I most think about their move when shot stratagem, their consolidate when fall back stratagem, and their advance 6 inches to keep them safe or just nav objectives. On the board wherever possible, I'd ideally want to hide them out of line of sight, 
They really want the jump on the opponent, not the other way around, due to their kind of mediocre defence. And each turn they're not making a charge, you may as well advance them to give them the best positioning and best chance of hiding behind cover. Ideally, I think you'd usually want to use them as shock troops to jump into the heart of the enemy, try and take down the biggest and baddest things that they have, ideally elite infantry if they happen to have those. Mass damage to attacks just absolutely demolishes standard sized space marines, they're particularly good at killing them. As I mentioned, I feel like there's definitely a chance to do some shenanigans with the fallback thing with the exalted 8 bound, try and jump into one unit and either kill it so badly that it's only got a model or two left, or destroy one unit and then consolidate into another one, and then have the chance of preventing them fallback to mess with your opponent's movements. Overall, I'd rate the 8 bound as a very, very strong unit for Codex World Eaters. I feel like a bunch of optimised lists are going to want at least some of them. They are very dangerous, but like quite a lot of the Codex, they're kind of fragile point for point. I guess in terms of competitors, other than competing between their own units, you'd also be looking at things like Berserkers or Terminators for your mainline damage dealers. In general, I think you can make arguments for both of those, at least having some of them in a list. Berserkers and Rhinos are really very solid, they get objective secured, plus they have very decent damage output in their own right. A lot of lists that I've been seeing use some Berserkers and Rhinos and some 8 bound of both flavours. Terminators are raised as a bit more niche, they have a bit more durability than the 8 bound and the Berserkers, at least per point, and they can actually contribute at least a little bit to the shooting phase, which is kind of a premium in World Eaters list. A little bit of shooting could go a fair way to just kill some very easy wins. Overall, I would rate as 8 bound as generally stronger than the Terminators at the moment. The speed and the damage to melee is really a massive bonus, even if the Terminators have their advantages. So overall, I'd say that things are looking really quite strong for these mutated possessed world eaters. Let me know your thoughts on the unit down in the comments. Would you be tempted to use these in a world eaters army list? And if so, how many and what sort of weapons? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I will hopefully be getting to a few more world eaters ones over the next week or so. I have made a fair few world eaters ones already, including a tier list and a start collecting army guide. If you'd like to check out my unit review of Angron though, I'll leave that as a link down in the video description. Finally, if you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to help support, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description below if you're interested in helping support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.